Welcome back to the second half of Newsbreak Live. And joining me tonight is Jason Minter from the Community Services Department. Jason, I finally convinced you to come on my show. Yes, thank you for having me. Tell me about the upcoming 4th of July fireworks. I know the city brought it back last year and it's returning again this year. I'm definitely excited to, uh, to bring fireworks back to Torrance. Thank you to the city council for, uh, for approving funding again for this year. Uh, this year's show is gonna be very similar to last year. Uh, the focus of it is here at the Torrance Civic Center. So come join us, watch a free fireworks show about nine o'clock on Tuesday, July 4th. What can people expect when they come out this year? Anything different? The, the footprint's going to be very much the same. The same street closures, the same viewing areas. Uh, we do have tickets available for the Toyota Sports Complex. Uh, the tickets are going fast, so go to the Torrance Culture Arts Center box office or the Community Services Information Desk to get your tickets. Uh, that's just for one of the viewing areas. You can also come for so first come, first serve to the, uh, the courthouse parking lot. There will be some bleachers set up for people, or just bring chairs, blankets, it's really designed to have the community enjoy the day at their homes, at the parks, and then when it gets to, to be fireworks hour, then just kind of migrate towards the Civic Center area and watch a free fireworks show and, and go home after, you know, after a long, fun day. But there is something different this year. Tell me about the app and what people can do with it. The app is an, is an exciting addition to this year's show. Uh, for those of you that you know are technologically savvy, <laughs> you can download uh, the Pyro Spectaculars by Sousa app. Uh, what you can do, you download it to your smartphone or to a tablet, and wherever you are in the city, if you have sight lines of the fireworks, you can listen to the music that was specifically created by the vendor to accompany the fireworks for the show. So. Right now, I'd encourage you to download the app. That way on July 4th, all you have to do is open it up, select the City of Torrance show, and you'll hear the, the same music that everyone's hearing right next to the show. Why did you want to incorporate that into the show? Was that some feedback you received from community members or? You know, so much about fireworks is, yes, what you see, the explosions in the air. And a lot of people talk about, you know, hearing the sound, the bang of, of the fireworks. But fireworks really touch all of our senses, you know, if we allow them to. So having a musical accompaniment to go along with it really gets you in that patriotic type spirit. You know, playing the Star Spangled Banner or playing, you know, God Bless America during the fireworks show kind of takes you back to those, to, to what the fireworks are about, which is really paying homage to, you know, to our great nation and the independence with which, you know, our country was founded. So it's, it's really a fantastic way to hear the music that brings everything together. Would you say the show this year will be bigger and better? I hear about thousand shells will be explode. Is that true or? It, it's probably going to be a few more shells than last year, but okay. there's different sizes. Uh, I was impressed with the, the number of shells that were in last year's show. Mm -hmm. It's still about 20 minutes. So, you know, for those little ones out there that are getting tired, you know, by 930, the show will be over right about then. But it's, again, it's a, it's a well-timed show. The vendor does a great job of providing a, a diverse array of shells, a lot of different colors, a lot of different features. That way, you know, the, the kids get to see their favorite happy faces. There's some <laughs> that sparkle and twinkle and glitter. And there's just, all, you know, a wide variety of shells, you know, to just suit everybody's tastes. But we're really excited about the show. And again, the vendor does a great job and, and we can't wait to, uh, to share this free show again with the public. And you did mention how people can get tickets and the different viewing areas, whether you are in the Toyota Sports Compass or not. So I want to go a little bit more into that because I think it can get a little confusing. So people can buy, or not buy, can go pick up free tickets right now. Where can they go and what will that get them? Well, we'll step back a little bit is there's a lot of different places you can watch the show from your home, your lawn, you know, mm -hmm. there's, there's streets and parks that are all within the vicinity of, of the Civic Center to watch the show. Kind of my rule of thumb is if you can see the radio tower and the flashing light that's on top of it behind City Hall, if you can see that, chances are you'll have a good you know, vantage point to watch the fireworks. If you don't live that close or you're obstructed by large buildings or trees and you want to get closer, come to the Civic Center. We will have the courthouse parking lot available mm -hmm. along with the smaller parking lots off Torrance Boulevard will be available for public parking if you want to get a little bit closer or sit in the viewing area near the courthouse. We also have the Toyota Sports Complex. Now that's a full synthetic turf facility. And one of the problems with the synthetic turf is we can't allow certain types of chairs. We don't allow people to bring food and drinks. You, know, you can't have easy up tents or anything. 
uh, of that nature. So the reason why we, allowed, we have tickets distributed for the Toyota Sports Complex is so that people are aware of what the rules are, what their expectation is, if they're going to sit on that, in that complex. You can bring a blanket, you can bring you know, round bottom beach chairs if you'd like, and sit out and, and enjoy it as you, as you would a picnic, minus the food, minus the drinks, but really <laughs> don't have ants, which is nice. But so that is one option, and that's why the tickets are available, is to make sure the rules get out there and people understand that it's a great place to watch, but there's a lot of other places to watch as well where you can have food, you can not have you know, a, a beverage with you if you'd like. I know you mentioned some of the items that are prohibited. I know there's a longer list of them. Is there anything in particular which you found that weren't allowed last year, but people kind of still maybe snuck it in that are definitely prohibited and not allowed in the complex? You know, we did have a problem with people that had tickets that maybe didn't read them thoroughly and <laughs> brought some chairs that were, they weren't allowed to bring. Well, okay. the good news for those people was they were able to sit in other areas and still enjoy the show. So it's once you get to the gates, staff will be there to kind of screen, make sure that you don't have anything that you're not supposed to have, and that the people that do, you know, that have followed, you know, the guidelines are able to go and watch the show. It there's so many great spots, and I don't want to give away anybody's secret spots that they would have stumbled upon yesterday, <laughs> or last year, I'm sorry. But there's a lot of great places to watch, and that's what it was supposed to be about, is right here in the city, right here in the Civic Center, a place where hopefully people are coming on a regular basis to the Plunge, to the library, to the Cultural Arts Center. People are here every day and kind of bringing them home. It's supposed to have that hometown feel. You know, I know last year there were people lining the streets of Maple and Torrance Boulevard getting ready for the show. And, and that's, that's one of the best parts about it is having a real hometown feel. I know a lot of people loved the show at Wilson Park and all the vendors in the booths. But this was that, that more that cost conscious way to still provide a fireworks show and yet bring in a new element, which is that town hall type of a feel, mm -hmm. which I think is, is nostalgic for some people. Maybe mm -hmm. they grew up in small towns is they're coming to City Hall to watch fireworks. For, for the evening. And, and there's a lot of charm in that you know, when we chose this location. This tradition is also so important to your team in the city of Torrance, from the Armed Forces Day celebrations to this. The city of Torrance is very patriotic, so I'm sure this was very important for your team to bring it back for another year and continue it. Yes, I, the, the city of Torrance, the Torrance community is really supportive of the, the military and, and the military that, that fights for our freedoms, and that's what Independence Day is all about. It's not just about picnics and hot dogs and watermelon or, or fireworks. It's bringing it back to what the, the true celebration is, which is celebrating our freedom, celebrating the people that fight for our freedom. And that's why I think it's such a powerful event here in Torrance. And again, why we can't wait to, uh, to, to see the show again this year. And the show for people who are maybe just tuning in starts at 9 p.m. The tickets, are they only available to Torrance residents or can anybody get them if they live in the South Bay area? How does that process work? Uh, they're, they're available to everyone. We, you know, we'd like to, to issue them to Torrance residents only, but one of the downfalls, if you're hanging out with family and friends and they come from other areas, is we will allow you to get up to a certain number of tickets so that your group can stay together. But like I said, it, that is just one of the options for viewing. So okay. hopefully if it's a, if it's a uh, you know, a family that maybe wants to be together, or a small family, or maybe they have special needs, it's a great way to know that you will have a spot. You won't be fighting traffic or having to stand for long periods of time. If you bring the right chair, you'll have a place to sit that's, that's guaranteed. And the fire marshal has reviewed our, our seating plan for the center, so everyone will, will be able to do so in a safe manner. And that is a really important uh, focus of this year's 4th of July, like all 4th of July, is to be safe. Respect the neighbors around the Civic Center, follow the traffic laws. There will be a lot of people out walking and riding bikes and, and, and enjoying the, you know, the beautiful weather here. So make sure that everybody you know, really tries to, to obey the laws, tries to, to pay attention to what's going on. Don't bring fireworks, don't bring you know, the, the illegal, illegal things to the area. Just keep it about what it is, which is celebrating our Independence Day, having great time with your family and friends, and, and really enjoying the holiday for what it is. And Jason, speaking of traffic laws, what are some of the traffic closures people can expect and how can people prepare beforehand? Is it maybe coming out an hour in advance to get a seat maybe somewhere on Torrance Boulevard or wh what do you recommend? Thank you for asking that. Uh, there is a, a traffic plan that shows the road closures. It is on the city's website, which is the www.torrenceca.gov forward slash fireworks. 
So you can log on, you can learn about the tickets, you can learn about the box office, how to get the tickets. It tells you all the rules about what you can or can't receive or bring on to the Toyota Sports Complex fields. And so that's a great resource. The street closures, Maple will be closed from Torrance Boulevard all the way to California. Okay. Civic Center Drive will be closed from Madrona all the way to Maple. And then portions of the neighborhood just east of the Civic Center will also be closed to through traffic, trying to limit the impact of, of you know, outsiders on the residents that live so close to the city. But uh, the, the street closures, the maps are all there. Uh, we want people to get there a little bit early, but we won't start opening the parking lots till after 6 p.m. It's not okay. designed for tailgating. It's not designed for hanging out for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. The goal is, as I mentioned earlier, you want to enjoy the day with your friends and family at a park or at, at, at a house, and then just come for the fireworks show and then enjoy the show and then go home. You know, a lot of people work the next morning or have you know summer school or, or <laughs> swim lessons. So that the, the trick for the Civic Center is you know, we have to set everything up on the 3rd and have it taken down on the 5th because Civic Center is a busy place, uh, even during the summer with the courthouse and, and the libraries and the plunge and the cultural arts center, as I mentioned. So it, it's a really busy area that basically shuts down on the 4th of July and we get to do fireworks you know, on the inner campus and, and then the next day it goes right back to being a Civic Center. I'm sure it's going to be a beautiful show. And lastly, I want to touch base. The tickets are available until July 3rd. How many are available? Because I know it's first come, first serve. If, if you want tickets to the sports complex, I would try to get them this week. Uh, the two locations, there's the box office location. If you're looking to, to find your tickets or if you, know, if you can't get there till the evening, uh -huh. I would go to the box office. For the people that can get them during the day, you might have a better chance at the community services info counter. Mm -hmm. But either one, the tickets are going fast. I believe there's only a few hundred left at this point. Okay. And so, you know, I would anticipate that, you know, by the end of the, the weekend that they might be gone. So if you wanted those tickets, great. But even if you don't get those tickets, there's still going to be a lot of great places to, to find a spot to watch the fireworks. Well, Jason, thank you so much for joining me today. And I know this show this year will be bigger and better than ever thanks to you and your team and before we go I have to mention your wonderful tie which I know you got just for my show so uh, I, I did, have to I acknowledge it thank you so much and you know it's only fitting and you know the fireworks is it's something to celebrate you know we do again thank the, the City Council for sponsoring or for agreeing to fund the show again this year hopefully the community will will embrace it will come out will enjoy the show for what it is and that everyone here in Torrance can have a happy 4th of July well thank you and have a great night Thank you. And don't forget, we will also be broadcasting the show live on Spectrum Channel 3, Frontier Files Channel 31, and over the air on KNET 25.2. And that does it for Newsbreak Live. Don't forget to tune in for the Torrance City Council meeting that will start right here at 7 p.